Hello, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Talib Osterk. Uh, I'm the founder of uh, Hazelcast. Uh, I'm just searching for the Hazelcast tools right now uh, and switching to the presentation. Okay. All right, so um, <coughs> Hazelcast is an open source uh, in-memory data grid solution used by many financials, telecom, gaming, e-commerce, uh, companies like um, <coughs> JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, AT&T, even Apple using and trusting Hazelcast. Um, Gartner also thinks that we are cool. Um, <clears throat> and we are the ninth fastest growing skill in uh, LinkedIn right now. So if you, if you know Hazelcast at your, at the Hazelcast as a skill. Uh, so we're going to be talking about in-memory data grid, uh, distributed caching, no SQL, clustering, these are the keywords uh, of this talk. Uh, talk. So, so you, everyone knows hash map, so it's, uh, it's a key value uh, data structure. Uh, so it's not thread safe. You cannot share, share that across uh, uh, threads. If you want to, then you use concurrent hash map, obviously. Now, uh, uh, you can safely share the map across uh, multiple threads. So. So what if you want to uh, share the map across multiple JVMs? And this is how you do it. So you download the jar, you put it into your class pad, and you call Hazelcast get map. Now that map is uh, clustered and shared across multiple uh, JVMs. So why? Because we want to build a highly scalable and highly available uh, applications. So I want to go through the quick demo um, so let's, uh, let's go there screen okay all right so let's shut this down okay all right so when you uh, download the Hazelcast zip and when you unzip you're gonna see something like that uh, so we have the libraries here uh, this is this size class all is the only th only jar you need actually just put it into your class pad and start coding um, and this is the uh, main center uh, war, war file uh, to ma manage and monitor the uh, his clusters we also have the documentation of course available here uh, in the bin directory we have a couple of uh, test a uh, couple of applications like uh, like the one that I'm gonna run right now uh, the test uh, run a, run a sage Run SH uh, is, a, is a command line application to simulate the uh, APIs. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna run that. So uh, let me get into this and terminal um, here. Yes, run that SH. This is uh, what you can do also after you download the Hazelcast. So now it, it's saying that hey, uh, I started at this uh, IP. Uh, this is my version here. And uh, there's only one member in this cluster, and it's it's me. This is the this is this node. Okay, so uh, I put something into a default map, something like one and uh, New York. Okay, and then if I do one m dot get one, I get I get the value. That's it's very simple. So I, I'm gonna do the same. I'm going to run it again. So run the application again. Imagine that you're running the same application on another on another uh, machine. Uh, run that sage. Uh, it will use multicasting and discover the cluster and join the cluster. And it will say, "Hey, okay, I found the other node. Now we are two-member cluster, uh, and uh, we, they should be uh, sharing the same map. If I do get one, I get the same value from the second." JVM second uh, 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 <coughs> application server or, or, or web server. So, um, <coughs> so we also extended the map in a way this, so that we can have more functionality like uh, locking and listen, listening uh, for the updates. So if I, if I lock the key from here and if I try to update from here, uh, put one and and verb. So obviously, if, when I hit, uh, since the lock is owned by the other JVM, I won't be able to update. 
until when? Until I unlock the key from that JVM. So as you can see, this guy just went through and uh, did the update, actually. So now m.get1 is the end verb. So we also can add listeners so that we can see who's updating and what's getting updated. See so if, we, if we do put to London. All right, so this guy says, OK, I was listening, and uh, new, new entry is added. Uh, and the value is London, uh, and it's added, added by this member. So uh, besides map, uh, uh, we also have queues, logs, and, and multi-maps, and topics. Let's work on uh, queue for, for, for a bit. If I uh, offer an item from here, I should be able to get the item. OK, take should be able to take it from another JVM, obviously. So, so we are sharing the queues and maps across multiple JVMs. Uh, OK, so far, any questions so far? Like, is, is there anything you want me to try here? Just, uh, just say. Um, otherwise, I'll, I'll continue with, um, so with, the, with the presentation. OK. All right. So alternatives, uh, <coughs> we have Oracle Coherence, uh, IBM Extreme Scale, when VMware Gemfire, Gigaspaces, InfiniSpan, uh, Great Gain, and Terracotta. But they are all different in terms of license, cost, uh, feature set, API, their main focus. So we said, hey, um, <coughs> we should have something that is Apache, that, that is uh, uh, yeah, free. And it should be very, very lightweight. It should be a single jar, no dependency. Just put it into the class pad. It should work. Uh, it should be very, very simple. It should be very, very simple that it should even run on uh, Raspberry Pi. So that's why uh, we, we've been running Raspberry Pi, uh, Hezekiah's uh, Raspberry Pi cluster downstairs. Uh, I hope uh, many of you you have seen it. Uh, how many of you have seen the uh, demo downstairs, uh, the Raspberry Pi? OK. So. <clears throat> So uh, at the end of the uh, uh, talk, uh, we're going to select one guy to give this uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, so listen carefully. Uh, introducing Hizlcast. So Hizlcast uh, <coughs> distributed uh, implementations of maps, queues, uh, logs, uh, semi for topic ex executor service. So we are trying to make the distributed computing programming very, very easy. That's, that's our goal. So uh, we also have native uh, Java C Sharp client. If you, if you want to run a uh, remote Hazelcast cluster and, uh, and uh, access it from, from uh, remote, remote applications. Of course, you get the membership events, who joined the cluster, who left the cluster. Uh, and uh, the dyna cluster is, is very dynamic. You add nodes, you remove nodes, uh, and failover and everything. It just uh, happens behind the scenes. It is transactional and secure. If you want to s secure the entire communication, we support symmetric uh, encryption, also SSL um, <coughs> encryption. Yeah, so, um, so it's used to uh, scale your application, basically, right? So we want to share data across uh, a cluster. Uh, we want to uh, cache data. We want to balance the load. We want to execute code uh, in, in the cluster. So I already did the demo. So uh, I've been putting things into the uh, uh, maps, right? So, so what do you think the data is? So where, is, is it replicated across all JVMs, or is it sitting on one JVM? So, so we, we have data partitioning uh, in, in the cluster. So we have, uh, at, um, by default, uh, 271 partitions in the cluster. So keys are going to be falling into these partitions, actually. So when we do a map.put, we we'll take the key, hash it somehow, and, and figure out the uh, partition it falls into. That's actually the, uh, the formula is right there. So hash the key data and mod with the partition count. Partition count is uh, fixed. You uh, uh, set uh, when, you, when you set up the uh, Hazelcast. Of course, you can change it, but when it's set, it's uh, fixed. So partition, we find the partition ID, and every node in the cluster knows who owns which partition? Also, everyone knows who, ha, who is the backup for, for which partition. So this, part, this information is shared across all, all nodes. That's why every, everyone 
So if, when, when, they put, when they do a put or get, they look at the key uh, and finds the owner of the key and goes, goes to the owner of the key to, to get the value. So uh, Hazelcast is, is very consistent uh, uh, that, uh, so you only, uh, by default, you only read from the, uh, the owner of the key. So it's always, you're always reading the, uh, the, uh, the latest and greatest value uh, of the key. So, and the partition ownerships are managed by the oldest member of the cluster. So, uh, so the uh, oldest member, we call it, sometimes we call it master. Uh, uh, when, you, when you look at the uh, member, membership list, it's the guy at the top. The very first member is the, actually is the uh, oldest member in the cluster. And that oldest member has uh, special duties, like uh, assigning the partition uh, owners, and uh, just making a decision on who, who's in the cluster, who's not. Uh, so, of course, uh, uh, everyone eventually die, uh, even uh, the, oldest, um, the master will die, and the, 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 the next guy in the, in, the, in the list will be the oldest member, will be the master. That's the philosophy. So, uh, so, so we, have, uh, we are partitioning the data. That means if you have five million entries, five nodes, everyone will have, will own one million of the entries, right? And everyone will also have some backup, right? So uh, when, you, when we add a node, so the guy will, will have no data and, uh, when, when it starts, but it will start, we will start the migration process. We will slowly migrate the, some of the loads onto the new guy so that we can uh, eventually have equal distribution in the cluster. That's also the purpose of Hazelcast. So if, uh, eventually, we're gonna every, every node will have almost equal number of uh, entries uh, on it. Okay, so of course, uh, <coughs> uh, one node will die eventually uh, because of a failure, and then we will lose the node. Um, so we had the backup somewhere. That means we, we should be able to uh, restore the entries. So the back, backup entries will be owned by the live guys. And then now we have uh, one, one backup missing, right? So we, we will uh, also restore the backups. Eventually, eventually we will, ha we will have also uh, same number of backups and some same number of owned entries. Uh, so uh, backups are uh, also distributed. That means if I'm one of the members in the cluster, my backups are on, on the, all the no, nodes in, in, in the cluster partitioned. Uh, so that means when I die, my, uh, my data is already spreaded, so uh, they will own uh, my data, so it's, we are all already in, in balance. So we don't have to rebalance again, uh, because we already uh, arranged the backups in a way that when the node is, uh, is, uh, is dead, its backups are... Um, owned by uh, everybody in the cluster. So uh, why, is that, uh, why is this important? Because uh, so the, the crashes are really, really bad. So, so you see, if you have a crash, you are already have a big, big problem. So if you are not, uh, after the crash, if you are not balanced again, you have a much bigger problem to solve. So that's why it's, uh, Hizukaz is preparing itself to the crash. Uh, okay, so uh, node types. Uh, so we have uh, data nodes. Uh, the, these guys over here. Let me, do we have the mouse here? The the, uh, the, the service with the uh, uh, data on it on, on them, and the, uh, the as you can see in the cloud, uh, we also have service without the data. These, these are called light light members. These are members of the cluster, but they don't carry. They don't have any data on them. Maybe they are good. For, they, they, you want to use them as. Uh, as your uh, processing machines, but they are still part of the cluster. That means they, they know the cluster very well. They, ha they have a auto routing uh, information. So we also have on the left, we have the clients. They're not part of the cluster. They're they are client to the cluster. So you can have thousands of them because they are very light, very cheap to create and destroy. So, um, so yeah, when you, when you want to make a decision, whether you should have a, a super client, a light member or the, uh, the client, you should try the clients first. If it, if it, doesn't, if it doesn't perform as good, then you should uh, try light member. So go with the, the native, native client first. 
uh, and uh, uh, then try light member. So we also have an uh, enterprise edition of Hazelcast, which combines the the uh, community edition and the Elastic Memory uh, uh, product. Elastic Memory is a, is a, is a off-heap storage uh, uh, built on top of the, uh, the community. So when you store your entries, the entries are actually stored off the heap so that we, we can avoid the long GC pauses. Okay, uh, so per, per map, uh, you can define the storage type, whether it's uh, off-heap or on-heap. That's how you, how you uh, configure that. Uh, so with the JAWS security in the Enterprise Edition, you define who can connect and can, uh, who can do what in the cluster. Can the guy do a write or read uh, in the cluster? So let's go over this, uh, some, uh, the code examples. Uh, so of course, Azcus is thread safe. You don't have to worry about uh, 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 another, uh, the, the concurrency issues. You don't have to worry about them. You just take the library and use it, just like concurrent hash map. So uh, the, 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 um, the main usage is, uh, is the singleton hazelcast, hazelcast dot, get map, get queue, get list, get lock, whatever, OK? And then you also have an option to have, uh, create many instances in the same JVM. You can, you can use hazelcast dot, new hazelcast instance, and give a configuration to create your new hazelcast instance. That means in a, in a single JVM or a J, in a JUnit test, you can create five node cluster and, and do your uh, testing. Um, <clears throat> they are really separate cluster. Their sockets are different, uh, threads are different. They are really different, different uh, nodes. Um, <clears throat> be careful about the serialization when you're doing uh, distributed uh, pro programming because uh, uh, I, uh, I think that it is the, the, the most expensive thing in, in, our, in our world. Uh, not the network. Not network is, is pretty fast, actually. Uh, uh, serialization is, 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 uh, is a performance killer. So try to, try to optimize the serialization as much as you can. Uh, you, for, for example, use our uh, data serializable interface to speed it up. Uh, or you can use your uh, pro protobuf or uh, Cairo, whatever you, you want to use. Uh, so try to uh, optimize uh, uh, serialization. Hazelcast provides the cluster interface so that you can, you can uh, know uh, who, who the members are or you can listen for the membership events. Uh, so it's very simple. Uh, you already seen the uh, map interface, map uh, usage. Uh, we also support concurrent map uh, methods like uh, putif absent. They're great for uh, atomic operations, of course. So, and atomic operations make more sense in distributed world because Doing two operation is more expensive in distributed world. That's very basic. So uh, just put a absent, very useful. Replace is very, very good. So uh, try to take advantage of those things. Uh, so the queue in, the, in Hazelcast is actually Java Util Concurrent Blocking Queue. That means you can have timed uh, operations like offer five seconds or uh, take uh, or call in uh, X seconds. So we all support the, the timed uh, operations in, in, uh, in the blocking queue interface. So uh, in Hazelcast, you have two ways of locking things. So one with the uh, Java util concurrent locks lock interface. Uh, you get a lock, and it's a global lock in the cluster. Uh, or per map, you can, you can lock a particular key. So you're, when you're using the map.lock, you're locking the key in that map only. So, uh, and it, it is very eff efficient, actu actually, uh, because uh, if, if there's no value attached to the uh, key, when you do an unlock, record is auto-removed. So, uh, so try to use uh, map, lock, and unlock first. Uh, the, 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 the one at the top is a little expensive because they are considered to be global locks and we keep them around. So that's why it's a little more expensive. Uh, so we also have distributed topic for, uh, to simplify the, the pops up uh, uh, messaging in, in a cluster. Uh, that's really the complete code that, that will compile and run. Uh, as you can see, we have a message listener on message, it's receiving the event and just executing it. Uh, and uh, <coughs> so in the main method, we get the topic, we add the listener, and we publish an event. So 
<coughs> very easy um, pops up messaging. Um, so these are uh, the, the, mess the messages in the topic are not persistent, uh, so they're not dur durable messages. So whoever is available at that moment will receive the message. We're not storing the the, the published events uh, for, for the for the new new coming uh, uh, listeners. Uh, we have the listeners for also for the for the maps. You can listen for the entire map events or for, for a particular key. You attach a listener for a particular key. So um, we also um, so we also say like, hey, we have the ex the cluster already. We have the nodes running. Uh, so can we take advantage of um, parallel processing or executing code in the, in the cluster? So that's why we have the executor service. You 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 write your uh, callable, we should be serializable because we're going to move that callable to another JVM. Okay, we rely on serialization. Uh, and, uh, and then you, you can say, hey, uh, Hazelcast, take that callable and go to that r r node and run it there. Or you can say, hey, take this callable and run this callable on every node in the cluster and give me the, the result as a collection. So you also can attach, of course, callback uh, to get notified when it's done. If you if you want to do a synchronous uh, stuff. So yeah, we already covered that. So let's uh, work on a scenario. Let's say we want to remove a, a, a uh, order from from a customer customer. So normally, what you what you would do get the customer's map. Uh, uh, if you don't want if you don't want anyone to work on the customer while, while you're working on it, you probably want to lock that key. That's not required, but if, in case you, your business requires it. It's just an example here. So let's say we, we need a lock. So we lock the key, we get the uh, customer, we remove the order from the customer, and then uh, put it back because it's changed, and, and, and unlock. So uh, code looks simple, nothing uh, to worry about, right? right? So it should, it should be straightforward. But uh, as, we know, uh, the, uh, as we know from the JDBC or uh, database programming world, we are, we are used to, we, when, you, when we look at the SQL statement, we understand, roughly we understand what's wrong or, uh, or how to write it better, right? We know, we know the world, world of JDBC, we, we are used to it. We are educated enough that uh, when we look at the SQL, we know what's wrong or what's, uh, what is good about it. So when we are used to, or, or when we're good at distributed programming, when we look at this, we should see a problem here. We should say, see, say that this is very expensive operation because it has four distributed operations. Even though the code looks simple, it will run just beautifully, but still, it is expensive operation. So how do we optimize that? Any, any, uh, any idea? Uh, how, how can we, yes? You make it and yeah. Keep yeah. Yes. Uh, you make an executable and you, you, run, the, you run the code uh, on the node that has the data, that has the customer ID. And this is how we do it. So we create a task. It's a callable. And it's also partition aware, meaning uh, they, uh, it hints the Hazelcast that it should run on the uh, customer ID. See the uh, get, uh, get partition key uh, method uh, uh, at the bottom? So it, it tells Hazelcast that, hey, Hazelcast, take this callable, go to the customer ID node, and run it there, because my data, my customer object is already there. And, and, and when you're running it there, your, 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 your data is already there. Uh, you should be able to do it faster. Yeah, and then now the new remove order method will, will be looking like this. Hazelcast, get the executor service, create the deletion task, and submit it, and then get the result back. OK, persistence. Hazelcast doesn't persist the uh, keys and values or any of the data structures, uh, but it allows you to per persist. If you, if you implement map store, map loader, Hazelcast will call you to store. When we do a put, if you, if you enable the map store, if you have the map store implementation, Hazelcast will call your map store dot store key value method to store it somewhere. 
you can store it into a database or a, or, or, or a NoSQL database uh, or on a disk. If you don't care, just store. So when, when we need it, uh, we will ask you to load it back. So load method is, is, is for this. Okay, so when we have a get on the key and the key is not, uh, value is not in, the, in, the, in memory, we will call you to load it. Also, the see this uh, load all keys uh, method at the top. Uh, if you implement this, that means you want to uh, you want to be you want to be able to initialize your map from a map store. Uh, so when you when you boot up the cluster, we will call this method to so that you can give us the keys that you want to load it from database when you when the, when the cluster initializes. It's like a hot in, uh, the initialization of the map, okay, initialization of the, map, uh, the, the uh, entries in the map. So, so you, you might be giving us the entire key set. You might, you might say, hey, we don't need the entire key set at the beginning. We just need the hot keys, right? So you might be doing a, a special select on the database and giving us the subset of the keys. That way, uh, we'll be, uh, be storing only the keys that you, you selected, uh, you, you wanted to load. So when it comes to persistence, uh, of course, um, we can store right away or, can we, or we can wait a little bit. So right, right behind is like uh, you, when you do a put, we put it into the uh, backup, uh, the, uh, owner of the, the owner of the key, and the backup, and we return. We don't do any persistence. Uh, and, and we do the persistence. We flush the, uh, the entries into the, into the database or the map store. Every x seconds, you define the x, okay? So every 10 seconds, we, f we say, hey, these are the Dover records. Take, this, take these and uh, write it in, uh, in, as, a, as a batch. So it's, it's better because, uh, one, it's, it's, it's going to be a batch operation. Two, uh, even though the key entries are updated 10 times, you're only storing the, the last uh, state of the entry. So it's very, it's very, very scalable. Of course, it has the... Um, uh, risk of losing the update, of course, because we, we, we have this time uh, in between the update and the store uh, operation. So, of course, so you have, you, you're taking a little bit of risk, but you also, you, you also you should also not, note that we also have, have a backup somewhere already. So your risk is like uh, losing the owner and the backup together. So then you lose the entry, uh, the, uh, the update. So the question is, um, uh, if, if the owner dies, uh, is, the, is the backup going to do the persistence? Yes. So, um, um, so when, the, when the owner dies, uh, so the owner, always owners are going to be persisting. That's a good actually point that, uh, so even if we're, the, the backups are not persisted. So, or, or, and owner nodes are going to be, uh, or the, every node will be persisting only the, no, uh, only the entries that the, owner, the node owns, okay? So not, uh, not the backups. So if I, or I'm the owner of 100 keys, I will be persisting these 100 keys, not the backup ones, because backups are already owned by, uh, 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 owned by somebody else, right? They, uh, they, it's uh, it's going to be taken care of uh, by the owner. Uh, so... Um, but if I die before uh, flushing these entries, my backup is going to assume that they are dirty and the, uh, the backup will flush the en entries. So, uh, so uh, when the owner, owner dies, backup things that are, uh, the, the, the backup uh, entries are, were actually dirty and it will assume dirty and just flush it. So, so in the, in the write-through uh, strategy, uh, when, when you do a put, it calls the store directly, so it calls the, uh, the put. That means when the put returns, you know that it, it went to the owner, it went to the backup, and also it went to the uh, store. So it's pretty safe. So if the store fails, the exception uh, will be uh, propagated back to the caller. So, so if you're in a transaction, if you do a, a put, uh, you, you get an exception if the, if the store fails because that's the de definition of the transaction, right? Everything should go through just fine. 
Um, read through is uh, uh, if get key uh, and it returns null, then it will it will, it will call you to load it from the store, and we will store it into the cache because that means uh, it's hot. You might be needing it again. So uh, I'm trying to be quick uh, because I, I know there will be questions. So um, <coughs> we we are the Hazelcast is a dist uh, distributed implementations of what maps queues. List multi-map. Multi-map is one key, multiple value. So the good, good thing about multi-map is that so, uh, so you can you can attach a one value without reading, without having to read uh, the entire uh, value set, right? So normally map is a one key, one value. Multi-map is one key, multiple value. So a set of values. So you can do a, when you do a multi-map dot put key and value, this value is attached to the end of the uh, set. So, uh, and you can, you can remove a particular entry from that set. So you don't have to do like, give me the entire thing, I will add something to it, and put, it, put the entire thing back. Right? So that's, that's very efficient. Uh, so multimap is, uh, is one, one key multiple value. So executor, as so we already talked about lock and topic, we also have Semaphore, uh, just like a regular Semaphore interface we have in Java, but it's distributed. Atomic long is very, very nice. Uh, it, it, so just imagine cluster-wide, uh, you want to you know, have a cluster-wide um, <coughs> uh, sequence generator. That's what it is. So you can say, I have the uh, atomic uh, number, atomic long. I want to add five atomically. You go and, uh, and his guys will add the five atomically. Uh, countdown ledge, regular countdown ledge interface we have in Java. It's the distributed Im implementation of it. So uh, as, as, uh, uh, it's, it's a jar file, right? So, so you put it into your class pad, and then you could, it is part of your war file, your file, the, your, it's part of your application. But also it can be running separately somewhere, uh, it's, uh, and then you, your application, your web application, uh, might be accessing remotely. So you could be using a native Java or a C Sharp uh, client, or we also support, partially support memcache and, and, uh, and REST. Uh, so as, as, as I said, uh, uh, the cl cluster is dynamic. You add nodes, you remove nodes. There's nothing to worry about, just, uh, just add nodes uh, on the fly. It will auto scale. I want to do, do uh, one simple. I want to do, do uh, one simple demo here for the rest thing. Um, I ha already have the cluster up, right? So who? Yeah, I already have the two nodes. Okay, so uh, I'll open a, another shell. I go to a desktop, and I do something like uh, where is that? All right, so. CURL is, is, uh, is a tool to uh, do um, HTTP puts and gets. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that tool to... Um, so this command will post the put, uh, the, uh, the image files binary data into, the, uh, into this uh, URL over there. So the 127.001, blah, 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 rest, Maps default one. It means it's going to do a put on the default map, and it will use the key one and the value as the by, by the array of the uh, image file. Okay? It's like uh, his cast get map default dot put one as the key, binary as the uh, the binary of the image as the value. So we have the cluster up already. So that should go through, but we're not at, uh, in the wrong, uh, right directory. So we should go to where? We should go to desktop. So here, here's, here we have the image file. We should do the post. Yes. So now let's go, go to this URL and see what, what, what's there, actually. What's there? What's there? All right. Nice. We got the image file. I hope you, you're all very brave a developer like him. <coughs> Not afraid of the box. Um, <coughs> so, uh, of course, we can go to the other, other uh, node. As you can see, we're using the same uh, port 
uh, as the other nodes are using, like 5701, that's the default ASCAS port. port. Uh, we can use the, uh, can go to the other node and see if it has the thing again. Yes, we can reach to the same binary from uh, both uh, URLs. Okay, so let's refresh this. Hmm, looks good. And um, we also have, um, let me log in here. Okay, so let's see. Okay. Set the URL. I want to visualize the cluster. Wow. We don't have uh, a license. <laughs> so we generate one. <laughs> you cannot. Uh, all right. Um, all right. Okay, so this tool uh, visualizes what, what we have in the, uh, what we see in the cluster. So we have two node cluster. You should see two members here, and we'll look, we can look at the uh, entries here. Uh, when you when you do, when we lock something here, let's say let's lock something here. Where is that? Where, is, where do we have the lock? Uh, okay. All right, so if, if you lock map dot uh, lock three, all right, we should see this. Uh, so as you can see, this, this, this guy has a lock here. So it tells you the contention, uh, con if there's a big contention in the, in the cluster, if you're using a lot of locks. Uh, so it tells you what's, uh, how many entries in each node per map. You can configure the uh, backup counts from here, or asynchronous backup counts. So we, we support asynchronous and asynchronous uh, backups. You can set up the TTLs for the entries here, directly from here. Of course, you can do all that stuff from the, from the, from the configuration also, uh, for sure. We show you the throughputs, uh, average latency. It's very important a metric uh, if, if you want to know how, how healthy your cluster is. Uh, so we also ha run run health check to see if there's anything, anything wrong in the cluster. Um, looks good so far. So basically, this is, uh, this is our management center. Uh, you can run your, uh, run your own scripts. So you can say, hey, I have a JavaScript that I want to run on cluster to clean these uh, particular keys because they're, they should be gone for some reason. So you write the script either in Groovy, uh, JRuby, or JavaScript, and then execute on the, on the, on the nodes that you want to run on. So these are the nodes. So you can say, hey, execute there, and we'll execute and come back. This is good for admin kind of uh, works. Uh, so we also have um, uh, a uh, console. So if you want to say, hey, um, M dot size. I want to get the size of the uh, the map. Tells you two. So if you want to if you want to try to get the uh, one, uh, it tells you that it's a rest value that you put. Remember the rest thing that we, the image that we've posted. That's it. So it's a rest value. It's an uh, image JPEG content type, and then length is this. So that's uh, that's a management uh, center tool we have. So you can, of course, uh, manage the queues and topics and multi maps, everything from, from here. So, uh, so let's go back to the presentation. Actually, we're, we're almost presentation. Actually, we're, we're almost done. So uh, as I said, uh, we'll be um, uh, given one Raspberry Pi uh, because uh, his cast uh, loves running here. Uh, so if you tweet something like that, uh, we're going to select one uh, at, by, by the end of this QA session and, and give, give, the, give, give, uh, give the Raspberry Pi. And we are all now open for the questions. Yes. 
Hazelcast supports, uh, uh, has, a, has its own transaction API. You say Hazelcast get transaction, begin, and you do your own map put and get, and then you do transaction commit. We can also participate in uh, J2E transaction as a local, local transaction, though. And we, we don't support two-phase commit. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so we also can join to the uh, JTA transaction. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one is uh, how, how good stories is with the financial institutions you mentioned. Is there really good real time and, and so on? And second question is what if the network goes down? <coughs> what happens then with your all nodes and, and so on? When, when a node goes down? Now, when network goes down, oh. the router goes down. And the, <laughs> uh, the first, first question is. Uh, uh, how, how is uh, his guys doing in the financials? Uh, is it, are they doing, uh, is, is it running in a success? Success, uh, yeah, sure. So it, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to say, right? So, and then gi hard to give details, but uh, uh, if, uh, they, don't, they don't usually, they don't easily put things into production, right? So that these, these guys uh, can lose uh, a lot of money. So when we say it's in production for a year, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a success story, I mean, anyways. But uh, how critical that is, we have to have to talk. You have to talk to the uh, financials. Uh, I can give uh, contacts, and you want you can talk to them and ask directly how critical the application is. Uh, and the, the second question is uh, the network. If you if the router goes down, what happens? If you if the router goes goes down, you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> we rely on the networks, right? So we talk, I mean, every node will, should, should be able to talk into each other. But, uh, uh, but, but you, if the router goes down, you have a way bigger problem, right? But sometimes uh, you might have smaller problems, like uh, uh, one guy uh, by accident just uh, pulled the plug off from the, one of the servers. Or the kernel panicked and uh, it's, it's something really funky going on. So uh, <coughs> we call this, these uh, partial failures, which are terrible and uh, worse than regular failures. We love server going down. We don't love uh, kernel panicking uh, or uh, dropping a core. Uh, because uh, partial failures are hard to detect. That's the, that's the bottom line. So uh, that's why uh, Hezekas also relies on things like pinging, the, the, um, the ICMP protocol. Also, uh, heartbeats that we internally have. Uh, every node will, have, will, send, will be sending heartbeats to the other guys to, to somehow notify that, hey, I'm up and I'm, success I mean, I'm responsive, right? So if, if, if you don't receive uh, a heartbeat for, for a long, long time, you define how long that, that's going to be. Default is five minutes. So even though the node is uh, up, we're going to assume that the guy is dead. So, uh, uh, so so we have, as I said, we have ICMP and also the heartbeat mechanism to detect or try to detect. Uh, but we probably are going to have other, other ways of detecting that too, right? So long GC, where you should be monitoring the long GCs. Uh, the guy is not healthy, right? So uh, the, one of the other problems is, is besides network, right? So we rely on network, but besides network, we also rely on what? <laughs> How our virtual machine itself? and the garbage collector, right? So if the garbage collector takes, takes, uh, I mean, collection takes very long, like let's say uh, two minutes, that's a very long time, right? So in, during that time, we're not, we're not responsive. Uh, and that's, uh, so for those, you can reduce that heartbeat to a co couple of minutes, but again, you still have, uh, so you still have other issues, like uh, what if the, I mean, the, the long JC means I am live, but I'm not responsive. That's what, that's what it is. I'm not able to call, talk to you, but I'm live. So it's, it's a hard problem to solve. So you, either ha you will either have to tune the GC very well so that you won't have very long GCs, or you're going to store everything off the heap to make sure that you're not, you, you don't get uh, affected by the long GC. Or you, you should have other mechanisms to detect that and, and at least kill the node. The killing the node is good, but uh, having it running, like hanging around like a, like a zombie, it's a bad thing. 
yeah, it's, it's not an easy, easy uh, problem to solve. Let me, yeah, every, every, every NoSQL solution will suffer from that, these, uh, these uh, problems, the partial failures. Yes? Uh, what happens after a network split when you have two masters? Yeah. So what happens uh, after a network split, uh, you ha will have two masters. You will definitely have that. Uh, so the, the split brain problem, very well known, and it's part of the partial failure thing that we discussed. Um, so if you un unplug anything or, or somehow the net net network router somehow cannot uh, d d divides the network into two, let's say, then you're going to have two separate clusters. Eventually, the, uh, the his guest nodes are going to say, hey, these guys are out. And then the other guys are going to say, hey, no, no, we're we are up. They are out. They are, they are dead. So uh, we're going to have two clus separate clusters, and, and we will have two masters, of course, in, in each. So one, one on each. So we're going to have a total of two masters. So, uh, but, uh, so they will keep running. So they won't, they won't, stop, uh, they won't stop, so we, we give up the consistency there, right? The, the key, remember the cap theorem? So when the, when the network partitioning happens, it will happen, right? When it happens, we chose to become available. Not consistent, but available. Uh, so we are available, so when the, the network guys comes in and uh, fix the problem, so now uh, Hazelcast has, uh, you, it's a configurable thing, you say, hey, Hizzlecast, every five minutes, try to detect if you are detached or if you, got, if you got into a split brain thing. So every five minutes, it will try to discover the other guys again and, and, and join, join, the, um, uh, join to the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, cl other cluster. So if you have two nodes of three nodes, two nodes will be joining to the three nodes. So the smaller cluster will be joining to the bigger one. Uh, and merging all the data on them. So that means, the, of course, so let's say you have the same key on each one, right? So the key one is updated on both. So these guys are going to be merging to these guys, right? So with the data on them. So when they merge, they, they say, hey, uh, this is the one, and then this is the value that, uh, that I had. So then on the merging side, we have, to, we have to somehow make a decision on what the latest uh, data is, right? The, because we have two versions of the key, key one. So in the, in the, we have default uh, merge policies, but you can write your own. We're going to give you the two entries, two uh, values, and you're going to pick and choose, right? So the, which one is the latest? We're going to give you a number of hits you got, like latest uh, update time, and you make a decision on who, who the winner is for this key. So after the split, we're going to try to merge and merge the values also. Yes, yes. How can we integrate with the JPA provider? Uh, we, we currently only support Hibernate second level. Uh, how can we integrate with the uh, JPA uh, second level uh, cache provider? Um, we only support right now a Hibernate second level cache. Uh, we already have a plugin for that. Uh, it's in. Uh, uh, if you look at the lib directory that we have, we have hazelcast-hibernate. That's the plugin that you need. It depends on the core hazelcast, of course. So, but in the future, yeah, we want to support all the JPA um, pr uh, implementations. Um, it, it is also tightly integrated with Spring, just to let you know. Yes. Okay, so the, I, uh, how do we, uh, how do we, how do we um, put the Hizkas collections into our applications? How, uh, is there an easy way to convert the uh, existing collections to Hazelcast? So, the, is that, that's the question, right? So, okay, just make sure. Okay, so there are two things here. One, one, uh, how do we do it? It's obviously, it was easy, right? So, so we had the map dot hash map, and then we converted it to the just uh, just the hiscast dot get map. You can do the same thing for the queue and everything like that. So just that very easy. Just to put the uh, jar and then use uh, change the implementation part of it. Don't change the interface, of course. The interfaces are good. Uh, so it's it's very it's that easy. But <laughs> the second part. 
do you really have to do this? I mean, do, do you really need this? The so one, one problem with the Hazelcast or Hazelcast kind of libraries is that, uh, like, when you look at it, it's, it's, it's very, very attractive. Like, oh man, I can turn everything into this and then I can be highly scalable, I, I can be flying and scaling. <sighs> but it has its own cost, right? It's not, it's not free. So, I mean, free meaning, oh, it's open source, of course, but it's, the performance wise, it's, it's expensive. So, we have to really make a good decision on uh, do we really have to convert our map into a distributed map or uh, our list into a distributed list or queue into a distributed queue? We have to have really good reasons to do it. So, so, so that, like, um, uh, you know this, um, um, this, this scaling paradigm, when you have this shared stuff, like uh, Hazelcast or in any NoSQL kind of stuff. So it's not like if you're doing like a million operation, okay, and then you turn the second instance on. Are you going to be doing still uh, two million, are you going to be doing two million operation? You are sharing something, right? So you're, it's not going to be one and then two uh, uh, immediately. So it's going to be, you're going to be going down first. You're going to be, because these two guys are going to be talking to each other and, and, and killing your, killing performance a little bit at the beginning. So you're going to lose at the beginning. When you go from one node to two node, you're going to, your performance will go down, actually. So then you will, you will go gain back. So, and then you add two, three, four, five. At some point, you're going to be equal as, as, as your first node performance. But the good thing is, then you'll be scaling up uh, linearly. So that's, that's the thing. So it's not like uh, when, you, when, you, uh, uh, when you have the first node, you're doing 100K per second, and then you know, when the second node starts, you'll be going down to 20K or something, because there are shared stuff, the backups and blah, blah. There. So it, it has its own cost. So make sure that uh, the, the cost of using the distributed map or, 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 or the queue worth using it, right? So, so just uh, don't, don't ch try to change everything, yeah. If you are a backup of uh, master, can you read from your local, from the backup, as long as it's synchronous? Okay, uh, for, okay. When you, whenever you say, uh, can I, uh, I want to read from backup, or I want to read from near cache, I want to read from cache, it's always uh, so you always in, uh, in the in the uh, you always break some level of consistency, regardless. Maybe it is fast, but you st you still do. Maybe it's microsecond, but still you break the consistency. So in Hazelcast, you can the per map you can you can say, hey, this for this map I can read from backup. You turn this on, you read the f you read you read from the backups. You can turn it on, but of course you give a little bit consistency. Come on. Yes. But can you tell how much time, maybe, if, if you can, uh, Hazelcast is uh, faster than database? For example, if you have customer table and then you have customer map, can you somehow say how much time, uh, for example, synchronize is much faster than, than, than using database? Uh, okay. So, uh, hard, to, hard to say. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you. Uh, uh, yeah. So, so, so uh, using Hazelcast, uh, uh, how much uh, using Hazelcast faster than you talking to a database, right? Yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't do that. But the, one of the biggest problems. Like, let me give you a use case in production. That so the the guys were storing session a telecom application. Okay, they had four nodes. And uh, they, they, they had they've been storing sessions uh, into so they, their load balancer were, weren't even sticky. So they, they, the request might go to any node at any time, uh, and request should be uh, should be going uh, uh, and uh, needing to read the session information for this guy whoever calling, and then do operations. So session is was stored in database at the beginning. So for node hitting the database all the time for session information. So. The first, uh, of course, uh, the, 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 the one biggest, biggest problem here is that you have a single point of failure, right? So when the database goes down, your application is just, just not usable at all. The second one is 
after some point, you won't be able, your, your database won't be able to uh, respond uh, because uh, you're, you're hitting so, so fast from, from four nodes. Or even, even maybe two months later, it's, it's going to be six nodes, maybe. So you're, you're going to scale this uh, web application layer, but you're still hitting the same database. So that's actually, that's the biggest problem. So they, they said, hey, uh, we, our database is not able to keep up. We, we need to put it into somewhere else that, uh, that's uh, scalable, and we should be able to add more nodes and just uh, keep running. And that's why they is, uh, uh, stored everything in uh, sessions into Hazelcast map. Now a request can go to any node and reach to the session from any node. And if we, don't, if we don't care about database at all. Uh, and, um, uh, and we can live without the database, plus uh, we can scale as much. That, that's the beauty. So not, not really like, uh, if you really want to speed up the, cache, the database, you probably want to have a near cache, right? So, uh, so not, not only the distributed one, but also the near, near cache uh, so that you don't even go to the next guy, right? Yes. It's always, uh, we, we always store uh, everything. Uh, so, uh, how do we store uh, the, the backups, uh, right? Is it deserialized, serialized? Hazelcast stores everything as a D, uh, wide array. Uh, so, uh, so that means uh, even on the owner node, it's wide array. And in the backup, yes, it is also wide array. Why? Because if, as you scale up, most of the requests are going to be going to the uh, to a remote node, remote node should be just st streaming the byte array, right? You, I, I'm already keeping as a byte array, byte array, I can just stream it down from the socket. So keeping as a byte, byte array makes more sense uh, in our case, because as you scale up, most of the requests are going to be remote. We're ta yeah, ta time's actually up, the guy is <laughs> flashing to me. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for those, that's why we enable, we, we also have a pr parameter to enable the uh, uh, caching the object. So for the map, you say, also cache me the object itself, because I'm doing a lot of things uh, with the object. Yes. And, uh, it's time, uh, time's up. I, I, I just I need to give this guy, uh, and I'm going go to go uh, uh, to this guy and see. I'm going to refresh it, and whoever is at the top, I'll, I'll give it, OK? All right, uh, who is this guy? Uh, Antons Kranga. Are you here? Whew. There you go. Thank you. Right, take care, man. Thank you for.